Yo, what's up, gang? I'm Mariah Lees. This is Frame, and I personally know that all of this art world terminology and understanding the different sectors of the art world can honestly be a lot to learn. And if you've been with me for a while, you have at least seen one video from my Explain series, either Art Galleries Explain or Art Auctions Explain. In this video, we are answering the question, what is an art advisor and what in the world do they do? In other words, Art Advisors Explain. But before we get any further, I'm gonna take another sip of this little lemon drop. And encourage you all to subscribe to this channel. If you wanna understand more about the art world, as well as get into the market of certain artists, both emerging and established, so you have an idea of what to collect, get into my videos. So. We're gonna break this down pretty simple. An art advisor is an art market specialist who advises clients' decisions when buying and selling art. In return, their advisor charges a fee. That could be 10 to 20% of the sale, or it could easily be, depending on how often you collect, it could be a, a yearly fee. We're gonna explore three main points to the job of an art advisor, and then I'm going to advise you on three artists I think you guys should take a look at. Number one, they help you cut through all the bullshit. The art market, especially the contemporary market, is very tricky. It can be difficult to understand and even more difficult to break into. But when you hire an advisor, not only do they educate you, they use the knowledge that they have acquired over the years to help you navigate through the world of art. The complexities of purchasing works that holds are increases in value. They make sure it's in good condition and they simply make sure that the market value matches the price that is being offered to you. Now, now don't get it twisted, don't get it confused. The art is always about what you love, but the advisor helps you find what you love, plus does all of that super confusing work for you. Now, why is sourcing your own work a problem for collectors with little knowledge? Because these galleries may sell you a piece that doesn't hold value and that no one wants. Again, it's only important that you want it, but they might sell you a piece that's all the way in the back that's been passed upon time and time again. And they might overprice it just because you really don't know. And I'm not saying all galleries do this because that would just be untrue. But I am saying this is a trend in the art world. Just don't ever forget that this is an extremely unregulated and racist art world. <laughs> No, but I am saying that this is a trend in the art world. Just don't ever forget that this is an extremely unregulated market and the gallery can place the work at whatever they choose. Perhaps that doesn't make for a good gallery or good morale, or, but how would you know if you don't study the market? So take this same scenario and have an advisor with pretty good relationships and an understanding of the art market. They may go into the same gallery where they may be known, get offered better prices, better pieces, and they won't get priced bamboozled because they have an understanding of the, of the market value. This way, your advisor is helping you buy what you love and get you indoors you may not be able to get into yourself and make sure it's valued correctly. Now let's be very candid. It's not always about the collector having the money to buy. Most galleries have the interest of getting their artist works to the collector of their picking. The advisor helps you cut through all that bullshit. They source the work, they get in the door, they get the good deals, they look at the condition of the piece, and they make an assessment of its market value. And then they bring this information to you, their client, and together you guys make a decision. Number two. You need to always find a way and find the time to accompany your advisor. Now don't get it twisted again. Your collector might make a few moves to galleries, studios, and fairs on your behalf, but it is also your job to accompany you to these places and help you navigate through what you see. This could be fun, educational, and it's some tag team sourcing going on. It is the part of the advisor to introduce you to the galleries and so on. When you hire an advisor, if you want a personal experience, don't be afraid to tag along to all of the events. Now, 2020 was a bit different, and I'm not sure what's in store for 2021, but make sure you are on board to go look at the art with your advisor. And if you're not on board to go look, make sure your advisor is sending you websites to look at, Instagram pages to look at. Make sure you're finding artists and you're viewing artists some type of way with them. This way you're opening your mind and your eyes to tons of information, making sure that when you pull the purchasing trigger that you're advised well, but also, you know what type of pieces you like because you've spent time looking at them. Number three, 
Now, this is how you complete a service. Many advisors can pull on the resources that shipping, installation, and framing easy, and typically that's what they do. After you've cut through all the BS, visited the right fairs, galleries, and the artist studios, got the piece, sourced the piece that's right for you, now it's time to get it shipped to your home, framed and installed correctly. Now when I say correctly, maybe it shouldn't be next to too much lighting. Maybe they need to make sure it's hung appropriately. And they should leave you with tips and tricks on how to get the dust bugs off of it. They even take it a bit further, or they should, to manage your entire collection. Maybe with an extra fee, but they should. <laughs> They're gonna keep up with your collection, its value, and they're gonna check on your works over time to make sure the value is either staying steady, going up, or it could be going down. Hopefully not, but it could be. Now, if you're watching this, you might not be a collector. Maybe you're a business owner that needs a collection of works in your business. Maybe you don't have time and you just wanna hire their advisor to go do the work for you. That's totally fine. That's 100% fine. Just make sure you're getting the right advisor and that they know exactly. I wanna make sure that you have conveyed to the art advisor what it is that you are looking for. They won't know what you're looking for unless you tell them. You could just put all of the trust in their hands it's up to you, okay? These are three artists I think you should 100% pay attention to. Now you're gonna wanna go over to Instagram, you're gonna wanna read articles, you're gonna want to really dig into these artists to find out who are they? Who are these? You wanna find out what their CV is, what they've done in their career. All right, now the first one is Jay Holmes. That's Jay Holmes 214. Next is Nina Chanel. That's N I N A C H A N E L. She has her own Uno, and I find it really interesting. I wanna say she's cutting edge, but there's a lot more to say about her. Don't have too much time, so I'll get into that another day. The next one is Lamont French, someone that I work with heavily. Guys, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to Lamont. You're gonna see his name pop up with me time after time this year. And as a bonus, we have Kobe Dill. Look into his work. His name is Monsiera underscore Tis on Instagram. And I've linked all of that down in the description. All right, guys, I love y'all. I hope you guys have a solid day. Don't forget to subscribe and I'm out. Peace.